Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of my wonderful interviews. Today, in the studio, live, we have the magnificent and the always happy Colin Wyatt from Happy Mind, Happy You. Hello, Colin. Hello, Richard. How are you? I'm very well, thank yeah. you very much. It's Lovely. been a while, is not it? It has been a while. Yeah. Um, in fact, I couldn't remember that you, we, we, you were here in the studio last time we did one. Mm. Um, and I, tr I am desperately trying to remember what it was that we were talking about. There's been so many interesting people on a similar vein. Yeah. But um, maybe you can quickly remember. Can you remember? It was to do with 2020 not being 2020. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I do yeah. remember now. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, which is actually 2014, 2016. Oh yes, that's yeah. right. The time, the, the time clock difference. Yeah. So today we're going to be doing something different. You have brought with you uh, an amazing new drink, which I understand you say is going to replace coffee in the future and many other drinks that we drink, alcohol and things like that, because of the nutrient value. Yeah. So I wouldn't say alcohol, but I would say, definitely say. Uh, caffeine when it comes to like coffee a, a guy called Keith the cacao shaman made a prediction uh, a while ago and he said by 2032 cacao will replace coffee now that sounds like something that's way out of range and and totally impossible but then you know people thought that planes were never going to take off the ground well that's know, very true uh, and, it, and it proved them wrong but um, it's because when people realize the nutritional value of this and it's still a sociable thing like you go for a coffee, yes, it does exactly the same thing. You know, you're having that exact same interaction. In fact, the interaction is even better because you know, coffee will make you think from the brain, you know, from the head and everything's head based. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is very heart based. This opens up the heart. It actually creates heart brain coherence. But uh, so, yeah. so now this is the this is the basis of things like chocolate hot chocolate drinks that we get, you know, the commercial hot chocolates and things like that, although they obviously add sweetness and you make it with cow's milk in hot chocolate usually. So, th so what makes this then, even though you're using cacao in chocolates, mm -hmm. different? The difference with this, there are several reasons actually why this is different and why it is the thing to have. If you're going to have anything that has anything to do with chocolate, this is the thing to have. Uh, and the reason why is because of its nutritional content. It is actually classed as a superfood. Right, okay. It has uh, bags of magnesium, calcium, copper, iron. Uh, it has phosphorus, uh, manganese, all these amazing and, and many more um, good things in it, you know. So you're having this nutritional value just with chocolate. Right. But it's the pure chocolate. and it's it's, a, So it's known as cacao. Right. Uh, not cocoa. Not it's, cocoa. It, all they did was change the A and the O around, if you notice. Yeah. Yeah. But Do you know why they did that? Yeah, because you can't really call it cacao when you've taken everything out of it. <laughs> right. Oh, I see. You know, and that's what happens when you, what, if you heat it over a certain temperature or? Well, what happens is, is they will extract the essential fats that are in there. And those fats have a lot of the nutritional benefits uh, that, that are trapped inside here. And, um, and we'll go through it in a little bit and I'll show yeah. you the, the process of how it, how it all kind of becomes this in the end. And, um, but yeah, they, they extract a lot of the goodness out of that. And when you distract, uh, extract the goodness, then you don't have such a quality product. So you can't really call it cacao right. if it's not really cacao. Uh, it's highly roasted. And when it's roasted, you when it's roasted to the temperatures that they do it to, uh, it takes away the bitterness because cacao itself, that chocolate, is, you've had a little nibble. We did have a, we did, um, have a little go downstairs on my wood-burning stove, which yeah. was very nice, oh, I have to amazing. say. Never cooked on a wood-burning stove before as well. No, it was amazing. Well, it was very successful. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed that. So it's quite bitter. Yes, yeah, it just has, yes. As it, as it is in its raw form, it's quite bitter. So the and more so you roast it, the, the more you take away that bitterness. But as you do that, you're taking away the goodness as well. Right. And so that's where cocoa comes A lot from. of people who like chocolate, who know that, say, milk chocolate's not so good for them, they go to dark chocolate and then you get different degrees of, you know, percentages of dark chocolate, mm -hmm. which is less milk fats and What's things. What's one of the best chocolates in the world, like where it comes from? What, what 
what what country yeah um I've got a book on chocolate uh, yeah. and and all of that. I can't yeah. remember now what kind. You would well, say Swiss, right? Swiss, oh, the Swiss the chocolates. Swiss chocolates. Yes, I suppose. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. But even those would have been roasted, and they're not at the quality of what this is. Right. This is what you call ceremonial grade, and again, we'll we'll kind of unpack that a little bit. Why it's called ceremonial grade cacao, um, but uh, there's nothing extracted from that. It's just literally from the bean right. itself, and that's what makes it very different. Okay, so okay, so so they even the dark chocolates that you get, that, which are like eighty percent, mm -hmm. which are very bitter, mm -hmm. that's um, that's still being roasted to that high point that's got rid of most of the goodness. Yeah, it's just they haven't added the uh, the milk and everything else to it. Yeah, so we're going straight back to the pure bean. Now, I know that hot, hot chocolate drinks were. They started to come around in about 1640, 1645, when the coffee houses started to happen in England, if our history is correct. Mm -hmm. And timelines are all, you know, and I know you did a thing on timelines, <laughs> so I'll not get into that. But that's when the coffee houses came. But hot chocolate was also at that same time. But I'm assuming that perhaps they were having more of this than the slightly over roasted removing of the goodness is that, is that isn't likely? that interesting that that came in at the same time it reminds me a little bit like vhs and betamax yes or um hemp uh clothing and cotton right yeah you know, all all in at the same time but they choose one or the other and and and, and it's, you have to wonder why well we why? know that the vhs was the inferior of Betamax and VHS, VHS was the inferior, but VHS got the market demand, and and I so wonder. The, yeah. So the market demand. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the money? You know. So. Yeah. So an, and that's healthy as well, and you wouldn't want to put healthy stuff. Well, on the market. exactly. <laughs> you know, if it's a, if it's an un, undulterated product and it's good for you, perhaps powers that ought not be mm. um, may not want you to have it. Mm. Well, the other thing that's interesting about this versus coffee is, so coffee has caffeine in it. Yeah. Yeah. Tea actually has more caffeine than coffee. Yeah. But, uh, coffee has caffeine in it, and. Um, Caffeine works on your central nervous system, which isn't good, which is why you might feel a bit jittery after you've had a coffee, or uh, it's certainly one of the triggers to anxiety as well, and, and you know, creates that, because it's working on that central nervous system. It doesn't like it. Right. It doesn't like to be uh, aggravated. But um, cacao works on your cardiovascular system, and it has something in there called theobromine. And theobromine is very different to caffeine, so caffeine gives this spike and then this big drop, yeah. whereas theobromine would take you up on this beautiful journey and it'd take you down on this beautiful journey too. So it's a, a beautiful way to work with the body. It opens up the blood vessels in your heart and, and all around your body. Uh, it opens up the blood flow to your brain. So it has many benefits like that, you know. So and and your theobromine, theobromine, not to yeah. be confused with bromide. No. No, or Which, bromance either. Or bromance, <laughs> yes. It's, uh, just because we're both bald, by yeah. the way. I'm just going to tilt the camera. So excuse me, ladies. I just want to get a bit more of you in the shot. There we go. And less of me. I'm shy. <laughs> <sighs> Of course not. Um, so, yes, there's no technicians here, by the way, in the studio. It's just us fiddling around. Now, you've got some bits and bobs to show us mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So I would have. you like to show us where does the... Um, the chocolate or the source of the chocolate, the bean, where does that come from? So if you look at where it, it originates from, you're looking at South America and, and that kind of area, uh, or 20 degrees either side of the equator. I was going to say that I, my memory, of I've, I've got this book on chocolate, and yeah. it talks about the equator and, it, and on yeah. that belt. And, and That's where it likes to be. And yeah. how it was discovered and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's an ancient thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. Um, it's known as food of the gods. That's what they call it over there. Wow. Uh, cacao, yeah. And um, they, it comes from... So the, the original... They believe the original cacao tree was called the Criollo tree. And um, the biggest production for cacao today is in Africa. Oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, but they're not from the Criollo trees they use a different hybrid uh, version of cacao and um, as they use these they, they don't have the same 
uh, content. In fact, they have more caffeine in them uh, <laughs> than anything else. So, uh, <laughs> oh, there we are, back to caffeine Close again, it, yeah. right? One uh, wonders why. Yeah. So, but now caffeine can be addictive. Yes. Is the cacao addictive? I mean, we know that chocolate is addictive, but it's not necessarily. Is that, that that's the sugar in the commercial chocolate? People say they're addicted to chocolate, but are they really addicted to that, or are they addicted to the sweet flavour and the mouth uh, feel? Well, from commercialised chocolate, I would guess they're addicted to the sugar. Right. Yeah. You know, what yeah. better way to get people in, right? You know, yeah. sugars and everything, right? And bread and uh, the whole whole nine yards. So, um, yeah, that, that's what they're that's what commercialized chocolate is. But um, this isn't addictive. I think what happens is is you get to realize what feels good for you and what feels mm. good for your body. It's also a um, a suppressant for appetite as well. You you don't have the cravings. I mean, I don't have any cravings for chocolate at all anymore because right. I have. Well, I have two of these a day now. Um, that's mine. I have one in the morning and I have a ceremonial dose in the afternoon when I'm doing my own personal kind of development. And uh, that's that's just how I work with it. But you don't need to do it twice a day, you know, one, once a day, even once every few days, whatever. You know, mm. Whatever suits you. Yeah. Uh, and in whatever quantities. But um, it you get to know, you know it, it feeds your body so your body's when your body's hungry when you're hungry your body's looking for nutritional value right so it's looking for uh, nutrients or minerals or vitamins whatever it needs you yes know, to, to get in and it will look for that and so it'll make you hungry to eat more food to get more in in the potentially to fulfill that need right and because there's so much packed into this there's little need from the body it says oh we're okay Oh, okay. We're sorted. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it actually suppresses appetite as well. Gosh. Balances blood pressure too. Well, it, it sounds great. <laughs> so we're going to give it in a moment a demonstration mm. of actually cooking with it. And we've got a little cooker here and we're mm. going to do it. But you've got some items here. Can you show us? Yeah. So when it comes from the tree, this is what it comes in like. It's like a, it's in this beautiful pod. And these pods are fruits. They are, they are a fruit. And uh, they hang in the tree. And they don't fall. They ne they're like as a ripened fruit, fruit normally falls from the tree. Yeah, this doesn't. Is it quite it heavy be... when it's? I mean, that's a, a dry one. It, isn't it? Yeah, it it will be a bit heavier than this. Yeah. Um, but uh, they have to be pulled from the tree, and um, the children over there actually they they open these up and inside there's a, this white pulp sort of thing, and uh, it tastes a little bit like pineapple, I believe, and. Um, they suck on, they take all the white pulp off and spit the beans out. And for us, they're very valuable. So you the get beans. all these beans on the yeah. on the street floor and everything else. But actually, you know, because to them, that's not really valuable for the children because they're bitter. Right. So they're so, like yeah. sweet things. Is there any value in the white pulp that they're eating? Is that nutritional? Um, I don't know, actually. Right. Something I'll have to look into. Yeah. I'll get back to you on that. Yeah. Yeah. It's always I mean, a good, it's always it's, a good re recovery when you go. I'll get back to you. Yeah, get back to you. I mean, it's it's obviously not marketed, the no, white stuff. No, so, no, but you can actually buy the pods like can, this. Can you? you? Can eat? Yeah, you can eat the pulp from the pods, but then you're left with beans that you can't really do much with because there's a process to to make to make oh, them I into. Oh, I see. Before you here. get the beans yourselves. Yeah. So inside here, you'll have between thirty and forty of these things, and these are the beans. And these are quite small to see. I haven't yeah. got it. Yeah, there we go. So. And they they are about the size of very large uh, broad beans. Yeah, yeah. Aren't they? Yeah. Nice, you know, big mm -hmm. chunky broad beans. Yeah. So they take them out, and what do they do? They put them in to little crates underneath the ground, and they'll put usually banana leaves over the top, and then they'll burrow them over for two to three days, and they start to ferment, and oh, okay. so that white pulp will actually create the fermentation right. process, and uh, then they pull them out. And then they give them uh, a light roasting. So there's nothing like what you get over there. And the only reason why they lightly roast them is so that you can actually get the shell off of the uh, off of them. Otherwise, if you didn't, you'd never get the shell off it. They're right. Just, it would be like trying to, trying to take a, a shell off of a broad bean. Oh, I see. You know? It's too fiddly and, yeah. and you'd, yeah. you'd ruin the pulp exactly. or the actual bean itself. Yeah. So you can, you can, he says, as he tries to do that one, that one didn't work. Yes, this is uh, all live, ladies and gentlemen. Lively recorded, <laughs> as it were. No edits. So, when you peel off the uh, the outer casing, you get left with this beautiful dark brown, dark brown bean. Bean, and it will break like that because it's quite brittle. 
but you'll get the, uh, I don't know if you can see there in the camera. So that's what you get there. And then what happens is that goes through another process then. When I say process, it's not processed. Not processed as in, as in the commercial uh, way. Right, yeah. It's, it's just it's, a series of steps. Yeah, and all it is basically, it's just lots of these together and grinded down. And what actually happens then is the fats are separate, you see, to the chocolate in this bean. And so in order to activate it, we've gone activating it, you need to blend them together. So through uh, pressure and, and crushing them together, you start to create this uh, paste. Right. And that paste then will uh, activate, and so the fats will interact with the bean, and then you have your, your cacao paste. Then they dry them in the sun, and uh, they turn out into, they usually dry into flat, things or sometimes like they're poured into like molds as well so sometimes you get them in round or, or square slabs or whatever um, and you can buy those commercially can you though just those those because you think of chocolatiers who make um you know small independent chocolatiers mm -hmm. i know that when i was doing stuff about um people who made things mm -hmm. uh, some years ago and we were talking to a chocolate person and they were um that sounds very rude when I say a chocolate person, but you know what I mean, somebody, a chocolatier, mm -hmm. uh, they were buying effectively these slabs of the cacao after it's been, that process been happened, but they've yeah. done nothing else. Yeah, yeah. So that's what you would call ceremonial grade because back in the days with them, still even today, uh, they would use it for celebrations and marriages and you know, important events. And actually what the tribal leaders would do is there was very few wars over there as well and the reason why is because the tribal leaders would come down and they would sit around with cacao which would take them into their heart space and into their head and create that heart brain coherence balance the blood pressure so they're not no longer stressed and they and they actually come to a, a resolution together wow rather How than actually creating war yeah and and it was all because they sat around drinking cacao together they'd go mm. into visions they'd have they'd go into their own little a little world and um and they'd have the answers given to them through uh what we call lady cacao or mother cacao or mama cacao she's also known and that's that's about the consciousness the the um the intelligence behind this thing because there's something else that happens which is still it sounds a bit woo woo but it's just it just takes you into another space and it's almost like you, you can ask for an answer to something or uh tune in or feel what what your body needs or and it's almost like it would be giving you the answer right. so that's why they say mama cacao oh okay so you you end up with this stuff which which is then chunked yeah. up into lots of little bits well in in this case this company they chop them into just raise pieces. it up a fraction Oops. yeah they chop them into pieces like this so they just uh they break them up which i find much easier Sometimes they're in blocks, and these blocks are a bit of a pain in the bum because if you haven't got a knife with you, oh, and you can't, you've got to try and yeah. yeah. Whereas yeah. this is much more workable. You can actually use this, and uh, it's kind of, I suppose, looking at that because we haven't got a camera to get the close up on. It's a bit mm -hmm. like looking at some gravel, you know. I yeah. mean, it looks very nice as chocolate or chocolate that's been. Um, <clears throat> get that there we are. If, if you hold it up to this one, oh, that one. <laughs> on, where are we? That way. You, you do that. There we <laughs> there go. We go. I mean, it's yeah. a bit out of focus, unfortunately, yeah. but um, yeah. So it's kind of like no some idea. stone graveling. Yeah. You know, you see people's driveways with with these lovely wh white chip stones, That's that it. sort of size. Yeah. But yeah. it's a cacao. Not. Mm -hmm. It's not stones. So there's nothing taken out of it. There's right. nothing added to it. It's nope. just in its rawest form that it could be in. Yes. And that's where it is. It's most effective. Right because anything else you get outside has been adulterated. Yes. Uh, and it, and again, it, it depends on where it's harvested. So um, some cacao plantations have uh, vineyards with them. Mm. So you get that undertone, that acidity. Uh, and because I don't drink, I can taste the wine I can, or I can smell it. And I'm like, wow, I know exactly where that came from. That, that There was a vineyard in with that. But this, where this comes from, which comes from Venezuela, actually, uh, they don't have the vineyards it's literally just cacao so there's no right. contamination in the sense of crossover or anything else oh, okay. not that that's a bad thing it's not no. going to do anything no it's just personal preference and taste but you can make anything taste good if you know how to cook it properly absolutely <laughs> right okay 
And so you've got the beans. You've got mm -hmm. it's been it's the the fats and the the good stuff have been sort of put gelled together, mm -hmm. rolled, turned mm -hmm. into this. Mm -hmm. What do we do to? We're going to make this into a warming drink that we can then ingest all that goodness. Yeah, that, that's the idea, isn't it? Yeah. So what you don't want to do with this is when when you're making this, you don't want to turn it in. You don't want it to boil. If right. you boil it, you start actually killing all the goodness. Yeah. In there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. You want it hot, but you don't want it boiling. Right. Yeah, that's the that's the idea to it. Um, and there's a, a little process in the way of making it so that you can make it really, really nice. There's a recipe um, called uh, salted caramel. In fact, that came from uh, someone that I've I've learnt from, uh, Liam Brown. Uh, he went on Dragon's Den uh, and secured three dragons getting involved with this. And a lot of the... Uh, spiritual community or the cacao community said he kind of sold out but actually it was I think he played it cleverly because I think it was more about actually how do you get the word out yes you know to the so masses. was he ending up with a product that you could buy off the shelf this yeah. which is well what just this this bit not the not the drinks ready made not ready made no no, no it's what you you make up yourself but you know also the beans and what have you but uh but yeah so I, I became a wholesaler uh, I went and did the training and um became a wholesaler for them because I've been using cacao for a long time in my cacao ceremonies. So that's another thing that you can do with it is something called a cacao ceremony. Uh, and they do these all over the country, so you're not, you're not trapped to, to one area. Um, and everyone has their own way of holding a cacao ceremony, but it's basically just holding space where you can enjoy, say, either music or sound baths, uh, meditation, yoga. There's lots of um, holistic things that you can do with it and sometimes like what I do is sometimes I have it and I just take a moment I just spend a moment just to be still mm. and that's enough you know it's like you don't, you don't have to go through all the flamboyance of a, a cacao ceremony to, to get the experience of it you can just be by yourself and just have a, a moment or you can be with your friend and have a good old natter and it's amazing how deep the conversations go right yeah, because yeah. uh, when you, I mean, we were talking about coffee in the old days, and again, back in the in the coffee houses of the mm. 1640s, uh, the government or the king and and the the the, um, the authorities of that time were very worried because people in the old days would have beers in the taverns and they would drink and sort of think the world is not right and they want to put something to mm. it and they would have a good old argument in the taverns they get so drunk the following day they couldn't remember what activity they were going to do but in the coffee houses because the coffee was um, not getting them drunk but it was mm. firing other things they mm. were hatching plans for overthrowing um, and the governments were worried because these people were not forgetting or, or getting, you know, bored with it. They were much more aggressive, not aggressive, but you know what I mean? They were more fired up yeah. by the coffee because it was making them alert. Presumably this is a sort of a, a step back from that mellowing them to... Well, c cacao, interestingly, contains um, a chemical that is found nowhere in no other food on the planet. Right. Oh, OK. The only place it's found is in your brain. Oh, okay. And it's called anandamide. And in Indian, anandamide. Yeah, and in Indian Sanskrit, anything that says ananda means bliss. So oh. what you've got is the bliss molecule contained within cacao. Well, we better cook some yeah. up then and get so some bliss. You become a bliss head. <laughs> yes. As opposed and to a, a bliss um, head. Yes, and exactly. <laughs> Very good. And um, it also has something else in there as well. So it creates... Uh, now, people will correct me on the name. I think it's called... Um, Thalethamine or, or something like that. I can't remember the name of it. But basically, it's the same chemical that's produced in the brain when we fall in love. Oh. So it also activates that part of uh, the brain and releases that chemical too. Gosh. So, so it, you it said it was a bromance. We've got to be a bit We've careful be, here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> be a, a, a little bit. <laughs> Lovely Julie will yeah. not be pleased. <laughs> So, so yes, yes. So in the studio, <laughs> in the studio, we have a cooker and we have a pan, a saucepan, and we're going to do this in one hit somehow, without any edits. So I've taken one of these little primer stove things out of my van, which normally Julia and I would be, uh, oops, cooking up um, our bacon or burgers or 
from the farm shop. Um, but we're going to cook up that. So I'll let you explain what's going on. We can't really yeah. see it terribly well. I wonder if I can just I zoom can bring, out a bit. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah, kind of. So I've got some utensils here. These are the ones I use because I just it works well um because what happens is as well is when you're heating the cacao up mm. it can stick on the bottom oh okay and yeah. i found sometimes this one's a little bit too flimsy to get it up off the bottom um but something wooden like this really really helps and actually when you're when you're stirring it it's helping it go between the gaps as well so it just keeps it moving too and yeah so yeah it just keeps it breaking up so um that's why i use something quite rigid on the bottom uh, just to keep it up off the floor and then uh, at the end we'll be using the whisk just to get rid of all the any tiny little particles that might be in there uh, of chocolate we just want to break so them it's going to kind of melt like chocolate Absolutely. would do Absolutely, you want it nice and silky smooth right mm. yeah. yeah no nice That's exactly how you want it yeah. yeah so we start first of all with uh with the milk now there's two milks that i recommend one is um advertisements yeah there <laughs> we go they get some commission for this Oops. uh it's the plenish uh oat milk because all that's basically in there is oats and water right oh okay yeah so there's nothing else in there and so you wouldn't use ca uh, cow's milk no you wouldn't use anything to do with animal products because cow's milk for example breaks down those enzymes so, so there's enzymes also for the for the tummy Right uh, for gut health, and if you actually start using uh, animal products, it actually kills the enzymes in there as well. Oh, does so it? So it's telling you, it says, "Look, don't use me with anything else." And right. Oh, so okay. It, Is over it, there, they didn't have obviously. Well, I was going to say they didn't they have use water. Uh, right. So you yeah. could use water. It, you could use water. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Structured water, filtered, clean. Oh yeah, exactly. You know, healthy water. <laughs> Just how they had it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Straight from the stream. Yes. Which would be uh, the best thing. So but we're going to try some of this. And we're not actually going to put a whole cup in at the beginning because what we want to do is we want to create what you call the paste. And the paste is where it's much thicker right. than normal because what you want to do is melt down this, this cacao and it's a much better process to, to get it all melted right? Uh, rather than trying to do it through a whole big sloshy thing. And yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going wrong. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I mean, most people are probably used to making some form of hot chocolate yeah. with pre-powdered thing and it, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but some people will make hot chocolate with bars of chocolate but of course they're already processed but it's all got sugar in you it's know? got it's sugar like, in and it's processed to yeah, hell and, and anything i use here in the way of sweetener is natural right so the sweetener i'm going to be using is coconut sugar oh, and okay. also blue agave syrup which comes from a, a cactus oh uh, okay and it's that one there and that's the best one actually it's not it's not overly sweet it's got like that like subtle sweetness to it, right. but it just takes the edge off the bitterness. Oh, okay. To this. And also, I might as well show you all the ingredients we're going to use. Well, please do. Uh, and also some pink Himalayan salt. Yes. Well. Uh, we're going to use a few pinches of that. And am I right? You've got a big tub of E numbers. There's preservatives and mon monosodium glutamate to go in as well, just to you know make it no. more. <laughs> Don't swear at me. <laughs> no. All natural, yeah. all natural, which is good. Um, yeah, so, oh, hang on, I might need to uh, fiddle with the... I've got one of these. It does yeah. exactly the same. It's a bit temperamental, isn't it? There we go. There we go. Lovely. So I can turn that down a little so bit. I'll move the handle this side. It is... It's kind of on or not yeah. on. It does go down a little bit. Well, we'll get it, we'll crank it up just yeah. to get that milk oh, okay. through. A bit so in the old days when I used to do live shows yeah. um, we used to do something called the Vogue show and I still got the channel uh, and Julia and I in, particularly in lockdown we would do all sorts of weird things like cooking shows okay back in the day and we would set up stuff and we would be cooking sometimes we would do it downstairs and I'd have a camera on a long lead from the studio so one minute I'm up here and then I'd rush downstairs into the kitchen and do stuff it was all good fun um, but it was entertainment stuff. This is all yeah. health oriented, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you can see, I um, don't know if it's possible to see actually what's going on there, but what's happening is this is just starting to melt now, look, and it's just in there with the milk. Um, and we're going to create this thicker version of it to begin with called the paste. So it's kind of a bit like when you melt, melt butter in with milk or something, or, you know, yeah. in, in a, uh, some sort of cake mix that you might be doing. Yeah. 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 
So we make up a thick paste. Exactly. And we're going to save a little bit for the lovely Julia as well. Yes, yeah. that, that would be very good. Yeah. I'm just going to move the microphone, your microphone back, otherwise we may just get gas sounds coming yeah. out. <laughs> and it's not me. And it's not, no. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, there we go. Move that in a bit. There we go. It's all highly technical yeah. stuff. So, uh, yes, you can see there, it was a, a glass and a half, as they say. <laughs> but uh, it's not dairy milk. No, as it's going to be more than a glass and a half, but yeah, we're close. We're and it's close. definitely not dairy milk. No. <laughs> I mean, um, raw milk, of course, mm. is very good for you. And we've, we've been promoting raw milk on the yeah. show. And John mm. from John Cook's been on the show from Dora's Dairy, who does makes raw milk. And in fact, Julia and I are going down to Dora's Dairy to have a milking lesson with the cows, oh, hands oh, on wow. the teats, doing all of this stuff. Um, which would be fantastic. Seems like you don't need any practice. <laughs> no, well. um, uh, but you, but in these tribes that would have done this, they would have had cows and they would have drunk milk, but they wouldn't have used that milk. You don't think they wouldn't? They definitely wouldn't have. No, it would no. have been um, water. Right. For sure. Yeah. Um, because it's the heating up of the milk. Yeah, they would have used a little bit of cinnamon as well, so they would have put some cinnamon Ooh, in there. And so you, nice. there's many different recipes you can have with this. I like a bit of cinnamon. So just, at Christmas time, you yeah. know, everyone loves a bit of cinnamon at Christmas time. Yeah, indeed. So you, you, I, you're doing all the work as ever. I'm just sort of sitting here pressing buttons, Oops. which is great. That's okay. I'm just making a mess of your studio. Oh, so. don't worry. This is very, very things. used to. Th <laughs> We're very used to that here at the studio. But I, I, I wanted to do this so that there was no editing, so that you can see, A, how long it takes, and B, mm. the process, and, you know, like it's so It's a lovely many... process, actually, because it, it just connects you to it as well. Well, so yes. a cup for Julia as well. As I was explaining um, to Colin, when we were downstairs, we were doing it on my wood-burning stove. Mm. I don't have gas stove, I mean, other than this, I don't have a gas stove here, so I have to chop the wood, light the stove, and I love that whole process of being one with the elements. Yeah. You know, and again... And you when, never said elephants. And I didn't say uh, one with the <laughs> elephants. There's always an elephant in the room, of course, but uh, we can't see it at the moment. Um, and I, I love that being, you know, as close to how things used to be. Obviously, it's, yeah. there are things which are useful to help you along like fire lighters and things like that mm -hmm. just to get things going and you haven't got to be there with two sticks or something um but i love that i love the process and then cooking of course trying to persuade people to get back to cooking with raw food not, or starting with basic ingredients rather um and then creating your own meal and then having people round to eat with you yeah rather than buying it ready made from a blooming supermarket yeah, in exactly. which it's all the nutrients have been taken out. You don't mm -hmm. know what's in it. You don't know what's been added. And um, it's not terribly tasty anyway, because no. the flavours are artificial. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'll just say, say what I put in there. So that I put um, a pinch of salt per person. So there's three cups going to be made here. So That's the Himalayan, the, the Himalayan salt. sea salt, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I put three small teaspoons of um, coconut sugar in and three small teaspoons of the blue agave syrup, which I can leave the agave syrup with you. You can, can, you? You can have some fun with it. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Can you put that in? Because Julia likes to put that in. It's an alternative sweetener yeah. for anything. Yeah. And is it healthy? Yes. The, the it's the healthier bread. version. Yeah. What's, yeah. What is all? That's a plant, is it? It's from a cactus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As and opposed to, um, as a could you put honey in? You could. I was using honey for it. Well, I'm not. You know, even though I'm plant based, I'm. Mm. I'm not avert to, to honey or anything. You can put whatever you want. And I was using honey, but honey is a bit. Uh, it's different because it's. Number one, it's very sweet. So you, it's trying to get those levels right, especially if you're doing it for more people. Right. Um, and if you're doing a cacao ceremony, you don't know who doesn't want honey. Do you know what I mean? So as agave syrup, that's an all-rounder sort of thing. Um, so if you're just doing it for yourself, you can put whatever sweetener you want in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's not refined sugar. 
No, or or, <laughs> or any of those click, you know, those horrible things, which those sweeteners. Well, which they cross the blood-brain barrier actually, so they don't do. Yeah, very you good don't want any of that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, you know. This crosses the blood-brain barrier as well, but it actually works on the neurotransmitters in the brain. Oh, and, uh, I don't think I've so... got any of those. <laughs> Have I got neurotransmitters? Neurotransmitters, yes, oh. you do. Everyone Not the does. same as 5G transmitters, are they? They're slightly completely different. Completely opposite. Yeah, They're exactly good. the same, but completely different. Oh, good. <laughs> yes. Um, it's interesting, actually, because if you look at everything outside technologically, they're trying to mimic everything that's going on in the brain, essentially, right? Right. You know, it's all about connectivity. And, and, and... often mimicking nature. Yeah. And yet we have nature and it's naturally. right here. Yeah. yeah. It's right here. Do you know, I mean, I, I had this um, little inspiration the other day. I was driving along with Julia and we were coming back from an event, in fact, yesterday evening. And we were looking at the sun was going down, beautiful orange sun. Mm. I was looking at the, the trees at the moment and, and the, uh, the um, blackthorns in blossom. The hawthorn is about to come into blossom. There's beautiful green leaves are just you know, taking on, and the, and the trees look amazing. And I said to Julia, I said, you know, nature is just so absolutely beautiful. It's just beautiful in and of its yeah. at, at any time. And always on time. And, and Well, and always <laughs> on time, yeah. But yeah. I said, man can make beautiful things. Let me yeah. help you with that. Man can make beautiful things. Mm -hmm. But the things that man makes that are beautiful, he needs to maintain them all the time. He needs to constantly, you know, polish something or clean it up because it gets, you know, whatever. Whereas nature just does it. Yeah. You know, nature just does it. It doesn't need the maintenance. It does it all itself. It doesn't need any third party because coming Because it's all on. organic. It's all working together in harmony yeah. as this beautiful mechanism that we don't even understand because there's an intelligence within that. Right. That far surpasses any intelligence that we've got in what we're creating. It, you know, and yet it's that intelligence that's created yes this yes as well because we're part of nature yeah it's incredible and it, it, it is and, and and then you think why are we always fighting in this modern world against nature putting ourselves into houses with synthet synthetic floors um you know yeah. a, 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 we, we cover us we wear rubber soles so we don't connect with the earth we do all this stuff we have electric all the way around us we have emfs well the answer to that is simple richard oh is it yeah do cacao. tell me. Cacao. You're not having cacao in your system. No. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. You can see you the know? steam there coming up. Which so, this is ex yeah, this one's hot, actually. So uh, uh, this A is nice good. hot chocolate. This is good. By five o'clock, it'll still be warm enough for uh, Julia. <laughs> you can heat it up, presumably. You I can, can actually, it. yeah. yeah. You can. It doesn't I've, damage from, it. From cacao ceremonies that I've done, I've had it in the fridge for a couple of days. Right. And, uh, and just heat it up. Uh, as, we, as you go along, if it goes into the fridge, it will actually harden. So you might have to actually add more oh, liquid just take to take a chisel to it. <laughs> yeah. It won't harden like that. Oh, right. <laughs> and I know because I've tried many oh. different ways because you can make chocolate out of this. I've done it. Yeah. You know, I've, I've you? experimented with it. Yeah. You can put uh, other things in there. So I use sometimes uh, blue lotus flower. And, uh, Where'd you get a blue lotus flower? They're not local, are they? No, they are. Well, they come from Egypt and around India, sort of way. And uh, but the Egyptians use them religiously. I mean, they would right. smoke them. Would they? Yeah, you could put them. Make are they like mind them. altering then? They are. are yeah, they? they they will connect you. Um, might and have to get my but they're pipe. Not, Can I put them in my? But pipe they're not and... like a mushroom, or they're no. not like an ayahuasca. They're nothing like that. They right. they just it it just opens up your mind. But not in a not in a dodgy not, way. Yeah, they're not um hallucinogenic You're not spaced or out. no, not at no. all. Not at all. Great. Um, you know, it's if you put attention to something you can yes. experience. But no. You know. And yeah. it's I mean it's interesting you say that because uh, and, and I know people some people are sort of going, Oh, when I mention that I smoke a pipe now. Yeah. Uh, for for a number of different reasons. But one mm -hmm. of them you said about having that moment where you slow down and you have attention and you focus and there is something about smoking a pipe. Yeah. Like in the old p p p pipes of peace, yeah. because you're you are focusing yourself in a way, so and down. and and I think with what you were mentioning about this, you're sort of settling down and you're focusing because you're doing something, not ritually, but you, it, there's a kind of a paraphernalia to it, isn't there? There's a, there's a connection, you right? Know? There's 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 absolutely a connection. Like when, whenever I make it, wherever I make it, yeah. I just fall in love with it. It's just, it's such a therapeutic thing to do just to make it. And then to share it with people yes. is even more like fulfilling for me in my heart because it's like, yeah, 
Yeah, that's what that's what it's about. It's well, about gather round, ladies and gentlemen, if you can. <laughs> although this is all pre-recorded, so unfortunately, <laughs> very tough. Isn't it? Um, there it is. Look at that. These beautiful hot chocolate. Now I have already. No, not hot chocolate. Not hot chocolate. <laughs> but it's a kind of. Someone a else hot. said that to me and it made oh, me shiver. Oh, did they? <laughs> Well, is that because the name has been taken? It is a chocolate drink, though, isn't it? It is, yeah, and it is a, it is a hot chocolate, but it's not hot chocolate because as soon as you say hot chocolate, people think of hot chocolate yes. because of the programming. Yes. So we automatically go, oh, a Cadbury's hot, but yeah. it's not. No, it's, no, no. But in our mind, yeah, in see, our, our, our mind doesn't know truth from fiction. It, it doesn't know, um, you know, fact from lie. It doesn't know. Well, we're but trying it, to we're trying it, to educate our mind by, to know that. Yeah, don't we? but okay. it goes by association. So as soon as we say hot chocolate, it will refer right. straight to what is hot chocolate. So as soon as you said hot chocolate, did you see the word hot chocolate, or did you envision the the image? No, I looked at that and I yeah. thought it is a hot <laughs> chocolate drink. I didn't yeah. think necessarily of a brand name. Okay, what colour is your van? Black. Did you see the word black, or did you see your van? I saw my van. So we think in pictures. Yeah. We think in images. So yeah. as soon as we say a word. Where the brain looks for an image right. to match that. Yeah. So when we say hot chocolate, well, I guess I I'm was. Not, I'm not I, finding fault. I'm no, just no, saying, no, like, no. For, you find for viewers. Find as much fault as you like. And <laughs> I'm, I'm more sure about you're... words, and I listen. I listen to language, and I and I because uh, I teach this as well. Right. You know, how, how to change our language with words, and and what actually we're really saying to ourselves. So, um, but yeah, we would we would call this um, our um, our cacao. Our cacao. It's just okay. it just gets that familiarity with cacao is this oh this yes. is cacao oh okay okay yeah. i suppose i was m using it was a more generic as a yeah. hot chocolate yeah a hot chocolatey drink mm. am i allowed to say that Indeed. or a warm chocolate yeah oh, god get myself so <laughs> anyway <laughs> yes. shall we shall we have some let's have some i think we should so what we're going to do right now is we're right. just going to do a we're not going to do what we did downstairs. We're just going to do something that we should always do, actually, whenever mm. we're, we're doing anything with ourselves. You better clarify just... now what we did downstairs, because they'll be thinking, <laughs> hello, what was that about? Well, we had we did a little... Ceremony. Um, yeah, a little ceremony thing, you know, but um, we'll, we'll keep it simple right. for, for okay. the viewers. So, um, so all I'm going to ask you to do is we're just going to take three deep breaths in together, okay? So when we breathe in, yeah. we're going to breathe in that beautiful energy that we're, we're surrounded by, the thing that gives us life, yeah, yes. life force energy or prana energy as it's known. Not the EMFs. Not the EMFs. No, they're, 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 actually we're filtering them out yeah, uh, through yeah. intention. Excellent. Good, yeah? good, good. And as we breathe out, we're just going to breathe out whatever doesn't serve us. So right. if there's any EMFs left in there, we're going to breathe them out. off. Okay, yeah. yeah. So let's take three deep breaths in together. Okay. Breathing in that beautiful air and breathing out whatever doesn't serve you. Let it go. Breathing in and breathing out. And what I'd like you to do is just open your eyes and just connect with whatever it is that you're about to take into your body because it's something we don't do very often. No. Just look at what we're actually taking in yes. and, and put attention and just, re and just connect ourselves to it. So at this point we could even take a sip. This one might be hot so just be careful. Mmm, it is hot. Yes, it's a bit hotter than the other one. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. but that's, that's cooker, right. But but it's creamy. Yeah. Yes, it is chocolatey. Yes, um, and it's. I thought. Well, I know what it tastes like because I did it downstairs. But um, initially downstairs, I thought it was going to be a lot more bitter. Because mm -hmm. um, you tasted the bean, didn't because you? Because I tasted the bean yeah. to begin with. Yeah, which yeah. which is a bitter a bitter bean. Yeah, bitter bean. Um, but it is delicious. I mean, it is without doubt very delicious. Yeah, and um, um, some people panic with the salt and they go, "I shouldn't put much in," mm. but they don't realise that actually salt brings out the sweetness in chocolate too. Right. So yeah, because people put important. salt into porridge and things like yeah. that, and and other things. There's two salts that I use. Uh, one is Himalayan pink salt. Yeah. Uh, and the other one is. Um, Celtic sea Celtic salt. Celtic sea salt. Yeah, but I tend not to use Celtic sea salt in this because it's very strong so right. trying to get those right yeah. things right is it's quantities is uh, is difficult so i would always go with the himalayan salt crushed himalayan rock salt and just um yes and just pinch so a nice healthy pinch of a nice salt healthy per pinch person. it's always yes. good to yeah if you can pinch more than an inch <laughs> 
So, <laughs> excuse me, when we were doing that breathing in, because mm-hmm. it just got the aroma of course of, of the cacao, which yeah. was which was pretty amazing. And the thing is, when we're breathing in as well, this is what I think many people misunderstand with their body is when they're breathing in they normally when they need a breath they normally go for a vape or a cigarette and actually what the body is saying is i need some oxygen but it's learned for association mm. that the only way it's going to get more air in is by oh really in. gosh yeah yeah, yeah. so not, it, and no, it says don't, well if that's you, all i can get if that's all i n- you don't get that with a pipe no right because you, you don't because you're mm. not you're not trying to ingest it you are sipping yeah the tobacco yeah and the flavors of the tobacco and people yeah. get that wrong yeah they think you it's think you have um, to take it back like a cigar <laughs> yeah and it's and the other thing yeah. is it's not addictive at all right you can you know sometimes i'll forget completely mm. for days and mm. i go oh actually i have another a pu-. and you do it for a different reason but it's i can amazing. see that with cigarettes it's yeah. a completely different thing absolutely different um and so we need that extra breath. And, and sometimes if we just take those three deep breaths in, it's enough to calm us down. Mm. It's enough to give us some clarity, you know, because usually it's where we haven't got enough oxygen in our bodies. Because in the Western culture, if I said to you, take a deep breath in, mm. take a deep breath in. So where did you breathe in from? Did you breathe in? Well, from I, t- I do breathe so you, down here. Brilliant. <coughs> yeah. Most I mean, people, I you of... say... Oh, I know. And it's all up here. And the wonder yeah. you get blimmin' anxiety, most yeah. of your lungs are down here. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, no, So I Western know. culture tend to breathe up here, but Eastern culture, they breathe down here into the... And so, into we, the we... Um, I've got a... Oh, it's not here, it's downstairs. A book called Breath yeah. um, by James Nesbitt, it might be. Um, and that's about breathing. And 400 years ago... He looked at skulls and he looked at the, the jawbone and all the teeth are perfectly aligned. None of the teeth are jumbled up and all of that. And people used to breathe through their nose and out through their nose. Yeah. They didn't breathe in through their mouths. Mm-hmm. We now, a lot of in the West, breathe through our mouths. And what's happened is as a result of that, our jaws have shrunk and our teeth get jumbled up because there's not the room that there should be. Right. Um, yeah. And and so breathing through the nose, which is what it was designed for. Well, and also the nose is directly up into the brain, right? So it's getting go. oxygen straight there, mm. whereas this is air down into the lungs, which is also important. Yes. But, you know that nasal cavity is what you. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, this is absolutely enjoying gorgeous. It. I yeah. am thoroughly enjoying this. Thank you very much for bringing it round. You're welcome. So. We um, we've sold out of this at the moment, but I think it's on the twenty third of this month of April. I'll have a new batch in, so um, so people stock. can order from you. Yes. So yeah, so this has just been one great big sales ploy. Then is that what uh, you're completely? Saying? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's got no nothing to do with health benefits, <laughs> no. or whatever. Trying to help just people, no. making an absolute <laughs> fortune. So p- presumably <laughs> you have to buy it in large quantities then, so that you can then distribute it in smaller quantities. Is that right? I I don't. I buy it in as it goes out. So in in the sizes that it it goes out, I don't right. I don't buy it in a bulk and then pack it. Right. It all gets pre-packed. Everything's done prior to that. Um. So that's the way that I I like to work with that mm. anyway. So it's. I know where it's come from. Yeah. I know who who brings it in, and um, yeah, it's just a beautiful, a beautiful way, and, and it's just a, a beautiful thing to actually have with someone. Yes, like I said, conversations just change, and, and just like we, you, know, you go into more depth, and you really feel a person when you're when you're talking with them. Mm. You know, just connected a bit more. And the thing about it also, more so than say the um, commercial version of hot chocolate that we were talking about without mm-hmm. giving any brands away yeah this is thicker absolutely isn't it it's gloopy yeah i mean it is it's it's like how it's i like imagine a meal, right yeah like mm. the the old porters mm-hmm. that the porters would have had in the 1600s when they were unloading the boat that they were kind of having a a thick porridge yeah. of a drink which porter originally came from yeah um and i mean it's not quite porridge by any means but it's, yeah. it's, well, it's, thick... it's the, i think it's the oat milk that's made it thicker than oh right oh, yeah. okay but if you were to have water it, it probably it would be, a bit be more runny it? unless you had less quantity of water and you could thicken it up that way so right. um it's just about it's right oh okay yeah maybe i've taken yeah. the thing so um yeah. yeah forget what i just said yeah. <laughs> what do i know i know nothing <laughs> um but it is delicious it and is it's and going it just, down very again, quickly it, it alters your mindset it, it takes you into a different space in your head you know it just 
you may feel your heartbeat and there's a lot of people that have never even felt their heartbeat never even connected to their heart right so, even so though that, that there that's, is that's not there. something to worry about not at all that, you know, if you feel your heartbeat and you think oh my god my heart is racing yeah. no not at all that is the theobromine that's the theobromine working because it's working on your cardiovascular system not right. your central nervous system so it's working through pumping blood through your body opening up the blood vessels opening up the arteries you know so giving you more actually around your body than you would normally have gosh caffeine doesn't do that no. Caffeine just works on your central nervous system. It doesn't open up the, the arteries. Or caffeine, anything. I know, dehydrate. Well, coffee dehydrates you, I've been told. Does this... This can dehydrate you too. So um, we would say, like, drink plenty of water before a cacao ceremony. Um, before a cacao ceremony, or if you're having cacao, do not have caffeine because you're actually mixing two things together and then you, right. it's just not a... Sensible thing to do. Yeah, not a sensible thing to do. So you would probably leave it at least two hours, you know, before having something like this. Yeah. Um, and food as well. So you wouldn't eat anything for maybe two to four hours prior to having this. I have this as my breakfast, and this takes me all the way up to about twelve, twelve thirty. Oh, okay. I have no desire to eat breakfast at all because the whole breakfast thing is a myth you know it's you know well breakfast is two words break fast yes so you're breaking your fast um and again it's that food suppressant so you, you don't need it because you've got enough you know the only reason why you're not hungry with it is because you've got enough minerals going into your body that says i'm fulfilled mm. this is good yeah i mean <clears throat> we julia and i t tend to have one meal a day mm. um we might have a slice of bacon at lunchtime ish but it, it really depends. It depends mm. on wh where we are and what we're doing. We don't have breakfast per se yeah. um, <coughs> anymore. But mm. uh, so now this is, you know, I've had two of these. Mm. I'll probably be able to go on a fast for you'll, a few uh, days. You'll be hovering in no time. <laughs> well, you'll explode into the universe and you'll become one. <laughs> um, does it have spiritual properties? It does have spiritual properties. It's it, 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 again on that other aspect. It is is a very. It, it can be used as a very spiritual thing, you know. Um, part of just uh, connecting to it is is a spiritual thing. Right. I mean, wh wh where do you, where's that line between something spiritual and not spiritual? If you're placing attention and intention to something. Well, I mean, you could do that with all food, of course. Indeed. Which you, which you should do. You it should do. Food. Which yeah. which which is what kind of happened in the old days when people used to gather around the tables and eat mm. together. Mm. You know, you'd see the the food on the table and you'd wait for everybody and you, you know you would all eat and you would break the bread as it yeah. were and yeah. then you start eating. And these days, that has been destroyed because mm -hmm. people are, kids are upstairs on their computers, they've got a TV dinner that's ping food, and they're just shoveling it in mm -hmm. without any notion of what it is they're eating. They're just mm -hmm. aware, and the flavours, of course, have been so enhanced yeah, yeah. with artificial flavours that that's the only way they know they're eating something. Again, and it's so association, you, right? And yeah. what you what you remember. Doesn't, um, know tr doesn't know that the truth is it's not actually healthy. It right. It says yeah. need. But I was thinking chocolate in and of itself is deemed, although it is everywhere and people, you know, often fill up a tank of petrol in their car and then have a bar of chocolate on their way to work. And I used mm -hmm. to do that and mm -hmm. put on weight and it was a terrible thing to do. But you kind of got into that. Oh, I'll just have a I'll yeah. have some confectionery as I'm driving to work, thinking that was doing you some good or, mm. or not. Mm. But it, chocolate can be seen as a luxury. Um, but you're, you're, this is more of a, you can have this every day, so it's not so much a luxury. Well, it, it's a luxury for your body. Right. You know, your body will see this and go, thank you so much. You know, it, it will thank you beyond words because it is a luxury. It is a luxury to have right. something like this in because if it wasn't able to get into this country, we wouldn't have it. So yes. it is actually a luxury. Yes. Um, and who doesn't love chocolate? Well, I, I know. And, I've, and now knowing what it, what this chocolate does for yes. you. Yes. Another level. We've got, um, we've got something coming up in um, July, shameless plug. Uh, then we've got something coming up in July in Glastonbury, funny enough, um, and a very sacred place. And so we've got a retreat from the 11th to the 15th of July. And um, <coughs> we have... Uh, cacao on the morning and we're having cacao on the afternoon as well so we have a, a, a 30 grams in the morning and we have 50 grams a ceremonial dose on the afternoon with a sound bath and uh, some other beautiful things that we we do so um that's going to be incorporated in with our 
And, w- and, and the shameless plug, what date is it? That's the 11th to the 15th of July. And what um, is it called? It's called Inner Peace Retreat Glastonbury. Yes. So not only is he selling his blooming <laughs> cacao drink at, you know, huge costs to the, to the taxpayer, but he's also got, no, he's not at all. It's, it's, this has been fantastic. It's about sharing, right? Sharing yeah. is caring and Sh- it's like... Well, I, you know, we'll put the link in the description. Yeah, Give cool. me all the yeah. information that we need. So yeah. if you're interested, you can certainly uh, check it out. Mm. Um, on the website, it's got lots of information about this as well. So if people want to actually research and uh, mm. go into it a little bit deeper, you can find lots of information on the internet about it. But also on the website, there will be a lot of um, lot of detail on there as well about what cacao really does. And Fantastic. Mm. Well, I've enjoyed that. I'm now Good. very alert, very open. I'm yeah. waiting for the channeling stuff Your to come aura in. is already open. Oh, is it? <laughs> is it shining? <laughs> it's just well, the way the, the light glow. is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hope, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that you enjoyed that and it perhaps introduced you to something, an alternative to the the commercial chocolate, if, especially if you're a chocolatier and you like that sort of stuff. It's not bitter at all. I mm. thoroughly enjoyed it. I mm. could s- sit now and have another one. And I'm not normally a chocolate person i mean i eat a little bit of chocolate but i know how addictive it is and i know you know it's not good for you so i wouldn't mm. have a lot mm. um but this uh, is different isn't it yeah it feels different it does so, and, yeah. and that's the thing so you, that's you connecting to the chocolate and saying hang on a minute something this is this is different this is not like what i normally have yes yeah you know so you're already aware of the difference to it which is absolutely great. well yeah. you know in this job I've been subject to so many new things over yeah. the last sixteen months. It's, uh, and it's, we all, it's quite, and we it's quite all are, right as well. Yeah, and, and and this is a beautiful way actually to come back out of it all. To sometimes we get entangled into all that, all what's going on, mm. whether it's the sky or the land or the sea, whatever's happening. It's like we get entangled into it, but this is a real good opportunity just to step back and go actually. And it really does settle you. It just settles you down. It just puts you into a different space and go, okay. And you actually find it, or I find anyway, and a lot of people find that they become very productive because of it. It's like, okay, instead of looking at problem-based issues, let's look at solution-based issues. And I think this is what it does. It taps into your your higher self, your that other part of you that uh, looks for solutions rather than... Uh, and that's we problems. definitely want to look at solutions at the moment. Always. Yeah. Um, well, Colin, hopefully, will be back in uh, some time in the future because he has a, a, an interesting cloud busting technology that he's working on. But we can't reveal that at the moment. Um, you're a man of many, many strings in your <laughs> bow, as it were, many, many skills. Um, but we hope you've enjoyed that, ladies and gentlemen. We're coming up to the end of our hour uh, interview. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Probably going. Have a bit of a snooze now. You're going Nick Julia's, won't you? Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> I, I will put that in the fridge and 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 keep it safe. Hopefully. Um, thank you so much for coming in, Colin. Thank you so much, Richard. I would just say one thing about cacao as well, though. I need to put this out there. Yeah. Um, don't let your pets get near it. Oh right. Is it like chocolate? Ordinary chocolate. It, it Thea Broman. What it does, it um, instead of the heart beating, um, pom 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 it actually starts to vibrate with pets because they don't have the necessary enzymes to to cope with the uh, theobromine. So it just starts to vibrate and therefore the heart can't pump. So it will, it's dangerous to pets. So you make sure your your dogs don't get hold of this. Cats are pretty wise and they won't go anywhere near it, but um, dogs. It's a dog killer. Dog might just want to eat chocolate because dogs love chocolate, right? Like we do. Um, So yeah, it will, it's not, it's not healthy for your pets. So, yeah. You heard it first here. It's not healthy on your pet, so uh, there we go. Anyway, I will be back with more monologues and more wonderful guests, of course. But in the meantime, from Colin and I, big thank you, Colin. Thank you, Richard. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and it's good to do something practical in the studio, which is always fun. I love all those sort of mm. cooking demonstrations. But until next time, thank you so much for coming along and watching. Be interested to see in the comments if you've tried it, if you've drunk it, if you've got an opinion on it. We'd love to see that, what you say. But in the meantime, from Colin and myself, it's been absolutely fantastic. Look after yourselves. Until next time. I'm trying to find where the happy button mind, is. Happymindhappyyou.com. Oh, That's yes. Correct. I forgot to, yes. <laughs> where can people find you? Oh, happymindhappyyou.com. Thanks, Richard. Oh, yes, it's a, it's a pleasure. It would have been, the link is in the description, of course. But there we are, happymindhappyyou.com. Beautiful. Till next time. Thank thanks you. for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>